Is it on? There. Oh, we're going to try that again. Did you hear the toll of the wonderful bell across the airwaves? He has risen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia. I am Reverend Nicole Martin, and it's my privilege to be here with you all today to celebrate this space with you. I see lots of returning faces, lots of joyful faces, lots of new faces, lots of faces of wonderment. If today is your first experience with Zion Lutheran Church or the Lutheran flavored tradition, know that we are people who are deeply in love with God. And your experience here today is just that. It is an experience where we are invited through the cultivation of the whole time to dwell with God more richly. So some of our language is sung language, where there's dialogue between us through the spoken and sung word. There's prayers that bounce back and forth because we believe all of us are invested in this experience of dwelling with God. You are not passive recipients of God's grace. You are active recipients of God's grace. The Holy Spirit dwells with you and is alive in you and is active with you. So we're thankful you brought it here today to share those alleluias. As a tiny caveat to our day, we must give special thanks to the women who went to the tomb on this first day. And we also have to, for legal federal purposes, give thanks to Simon and Garfunkel, because they're going to help us today. So, pause, right? It's coming, so don't be surprised when you're like, what's that crazy pastor doing? There's a beautiful story unfolding for you today. It is the truth that changed the whole world. Be prepared to listen and dwell deeply. All right, Mike has already disappeared. There he is. Be sure to take your announcement sheet home this morning to read carefully through all the announcements. There are a few we'd like to draw your attention to. Uh, thank you to Jim and Susan Hook for sponsoring our radio broadcast today. Uh, coming up on Saturday is the Youth Rummage Sale from 8 till noon. If you have items you would like to donate, you can bring them on starting Tuesday uh, and leave them in, on the tables at the back of the fellowship hall. Please, no electronics or adult clothing. We are a partner and congregation in the Bethesda Home of Aberdeen organization. Their annual meeting is coming up in April, and we can send delegates. Next Sunday, there will be an intergenerational service opportunity following breakfast in the Fellowship Hall. <coughs> uh, we will be, gain, uh, be rolling bandages for the Lutheran World Relief, which will then be sent overseas to help those in need. If you would like to participate in this project, please mark the date on your calendar and make plans to join in. Finally, just a reminder that the office will be closed tomorrow for Easter Monday. And with that, to turn the back of the sanctuary on Monday Thursday this story went out into the world to meet grief and pain and then they returned and it was dawn and the sun was warming the earth the birds were singing the beauty of the day was lost on the grieving women 
It may as well have been midnight as they approached the tomb. It was dawn, the sun was warming the earth, the birds were singing. But the beauty of the day, next slide please. <laughs> it was dawn, the earth was rejoicing, the breeze whispered hallelujahs across the land. It made no sense. The stone had moved, the body was gone. Confusion and fear shoved grief to the side. It was dawn, the trees swayed in the rhythm of songs from the heavens. Dazzling clothes, strange voices, familiar words. On the third day, the Son of Man will rise again. It was dawn, the women were running, the words were forming. Christ is risen, come and see. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is the life giving of life for us. Alleluia. Look, here is bread and wine. Here is the bread and wine and the cup of forgiveness for us. Alleluia. Look. Here is the empty cross. Here is the promise of resurrection for us. Alleluia. Come, drink, drink, and taste, and be raised anew. God of grace and glory, you have by your own handiwork brought us through the dark shadows that threatened to keep us in bondage and into the light of Jesus' resurrection. Yet even on our best days, we struggle to see the light as we ought. Make us alive in Christ, O God, so we may see your glory, not looking to ourselves, but rather to Christ. 
who is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Make us new as you make all things new, to live with boldness into your holiness. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Rejoice with all creation around God's throne. The light of the risen Christ puts to flight all evil deeds, washes away sin, restores innocence to the fallen, casts out hate, brings peace, and humbles earthly pride. Jesus Christ loves you and frees you from the bondage of brokenness by his blood and calls you to holiness. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen.
The first reading today is from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. The message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testified about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 118 responsively. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, I shall live, and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received in which you also stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have become to believe in vain. For I hand it on to you as of first importance, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so we have become to believe. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Pause. 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 Go back a slide. <laughs> Before I get to this place, I will only give a mini, like, five-word sermon. This is why we're saved by grace, because we will intentionally and unintentionally mess it up every time. Sandra and I and Sonia and I have been practicing for a week. I promise you, this is why grace exists, right? So, all of us are deserving of beautiful grace today as we celebrate He is Risen. 
And it is wonderful to hear music again. Good to let it wash over us and lift up our voices. Easter's the time of singing with great abandon in hope of what God does. This is why we shout alleluia. But sometimes alleluias are hard won and please sit. This is not a time to be, you're going to have to stand again in a minute. I don't need to make you stand more than you needed to. I should have asked you to do that. But sometimes alleluias are hard worn. Sometimes alleluias don't come easy. Sometimes they are stuck in our throat and buried way down inside because the pain of the world is too real and alleluias are hard to find. Grief teaches us this. Trauma teaches us this. Each of us here have our own story of walking in the valley of the shadow of death, listening desperately for alleluias, but only hearing silence. Today, we will be taught by women what that kind of silence does to our soul. The gospel of Mark is different. They do not run away shouting. So listen well as the woman from the gospel of Mark tell their tale of finding alleluias with the help from sounds of silence. Now please stand as you are able. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salmon brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on that first day of the week, as the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that stone which was very large, had been rolled back as they entered the tomb. They saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be afraid. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. I invite you to be seated. This is intentional. You heard how they left. How they sat. What story is being told 
in silence. The Gospel of Mark, like last week, we are left holding a bag of uncomfortable. There is tension between the celebration and the reality of what is. Celebrating that he is king, but then there was betrayal. Today we shout, he is risen, alleluia. But then there is, according to Mark's Gospel, a heaviness that comes with encountering that alleluia. As women didn't run away shouting for joy, their response happens. Within the sound of silence. And who could blame them, really? Wouldn't it, doesn't it take time to reconcile the profound event of a man being raised from the dead? How does one take all of that in? Imagine with me. You saw firsthand, they saw firsthand, the man they believed to be the Messiah, accused, beaten, bruised, hung on a cross. Instead of water, he was given sour wine offered, and to ensure death, he was skewed in the side by a spear. These women saw him take his last breath. They saw guards cast lot for his clothes. They saw mocking and teasing. They witnessed everything. Then their friend, their friend, Jesus of, uh, Joseph of Arimathea, has the body taken down, and these women must do what they can to prepare him to be sealed in a tomb before the Sabbath day begins. And they work ferociously. And then they must go home to sit and wait. They must go home to sleep. How does one sleep with those visions of human horrors etched into the mind? Wouldn't those images haunt your night? And how do you speak of them? Do you speak of them? Or is silence your only friend, giving you space in your dreams to process what it is you have witnessed and even participated in? the next morning, trying to shake off the unrest, trying hard to formulate words, but they don't come. How do you deal with the diagnosis of the world that just came down upon you? How do you speak of something that is so unjust and painful? And how do you put words to any of it? At least you know what you have to do, even if you can't speak. Now is a chance to finish preparing for the burial ritual. And then you can grieve. You can grieve as much as you want. You can scream if need be. Soon, that time will come soon, you hope. But for now, you prepare. You go in haste, ready for what you will see. 
preparing your eyes and your nose for the reality of what death does and the hard work that is coming. Oh, Lord, who's going to roll that stone away? And who will push us away dreams of death that invade our night? And what you thought was going to be quickly shifts right before your eyes in a flash. As light, it speaks to you, greeting your pain. Greeting your silent hurt. Was that an angel? He said, don't be afraid. But how could I not be afraid? Nothing was reconcilable except that silence has now been cracked open by the words of possibilities beyond comprehension. Look, there, you're looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, that is where they laid him. And they look. Death was missing. Death was absent. What happened to the death they knew of? What happened to the death they had witnessed? What happened to the pain they saw? Where did it go? Is it possible that death itself can be destroyed? Is it possible for pain to be removed? No wonder silence was their friend. It would have been my friend too, as it created space to take in what seems impossible. It gave them space to pause and reflect what they had heard and seen of Jesus of Nazareth. The memories of relationship with Jesus take shape he said he was with the Father, and the Father was with him, and an advocate would come. He said he would be going to the cross. He said he would be going to the cross and then be raised. Those Pharisees laughed at him. Peter got angry with him. Judas didn't believe and forced this whole ugly thing. Ugh, betrayer! But here it is. Is this it? Is this the power of the cross for our lives? Is this the power of God before us? That death is now absent from us? Can we hope in life beyond what is possible or provable with evidence? Is this why he's called Emmanuel, God with us? So we have vision and it includes not just silence, but alleluias? The silence of these women, it is reasonable, and they take it. It was space for them to discern the truth of who God was for them. And that golden silence is sacred silence. But even it won't last long, as the reality of what they had learned from Jesus himself starts to settle in. They will do as the angels command them. They will go and tell the disciples. They will shout, He is risen. And their silence will turn to alleluias that the whole world will proclaim. The message that death is absent and life beyond flesh is real. 
this good news will be shared over and over from person to person across community and country and nation and continent. And when we encounter it, maybe we will step into that golden sacred silence for a while, wondering, is it possible? Maybe we will have fear and unsure of what to do, unable to reconcile this truth. But faith will prompt us to move our silence into alleluias. In faith, our silence becomes a song of joy. That we believe and cling to the words we hold dear. That God so loved the world that through his son, the world would not be condemned, but would be saved through him. Jesus Christ, the Emmanuel, God with us.
with you all. I invite you to share this good news with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. All of a sudden, you were really loud for some reason. Peace be with you. Please put back your stuff. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. As we come back to big group, we take this time to remember that God did all of this amazing thing millennial ago for us. And we share that thanks by our offering. Our lives are gifts of God, and we invite people to share in that gift by offering first fruits to the missions and work of the body. Let us pray together. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May these gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior. 
the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus, he took bread and he gave thanks. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper in the same way, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together in confidence the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from glory. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table. Know that all people are welcome here. This is God's meal for you. This is God's forgiveness for you. Come with your believing heart. Take in that precious love of God and leave knowing you have been filled reconciled, restored to live a life of joy. If you come forward and you're a little person or even a big person who does not wish communion, please just cross your arms so that well, we honor your, re respect your need to not take communion. If you need gluten-free wafers, please just let us know and we will serve you. I invite you to be seated and the ushers will direct you forward.
please stand as you are able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray together. Shepherd and King, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Silence is not our story anymore. We get to sing the Alleluia's, and the first person who can tell me what that says. I will take to lunch. <laughs> the God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. In the name of the Father and Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. 